So maybe experiment's a bad word. Maybe um, maybe a better word would be being playful, being curious, being open to new ideas. But one thing that um, came up time and time again in the discussions that I've had with different musicians in this project is how much they are keen to learn, develop, find new ways of working, respond to new ideas. The thing that is thrilling about creative art and as a, as a receiver, as well as a maker, is when something new happens. When something happens to you and you think, wow, that never happened before. Um, that comes out of a state of alertness, I think, of seeing that moment when something new is starting to emerge and jumping on it and saying, I'll follow that. If you're working under pressure, you often don't do that because it's risky. You know, you can follow that moment and it doesn't go anywhere or it doesn't go anywhere for 15 years. You know, it, some ideas take a long time to bear fruit. Um, so the tendency, if you're under pressure, for instance, working in a studio that you're paying money for or working to a deadline, the tendency is to take the safe route that you know will kind of pay off in a predictable way. Sure, I understand that, but it's not what I want to be doing with my life most of the time. I want to be thrilled. Knowing your process is good, but getting stuck in a rhythm that is sort of making you, or for me anyway, sorry, making me create the sort of same things over and over again, it's really important to, uh, to rejuvenate, I think. It's a process, it's a journey in life, I feel like I am learning every day and I will learn forever. And there's not going to be a day where I reach a point or a goal or, a, you know, a dream movie that I'm going to go, and I did it and done. It's just this constant journey of exploring, learning uh, about yourself musically, ex experiencing life in the world and music. And, you know, with the project that uh, we did with Mongrel, um, which, you know, had members of Baby Shambles, Arctic Monkeys, Reverend and the Makers, they're all coming from uh, different situations musically, playing on the same song as Wretch 3-2, for example. I knew it was going to be an experiment. I think that any time you push uh, beyond a comfort zone that you have, there's always going to be growth in that space. I have recently wanted to uh, find a new way of of writing because I know that there I will have ideas but I want to know what they're going to what they could be like using a different software using a different creative software and I'm going to start learning Ableton because I've always worked in Logic and Logic and I have been friends for 10 years and that's really good but like any long-term relationship <laughs> You know, I'm not saying you need to... I don't actually want to go into this metaphor. Are you having an affair with Able to Live? Maybe you're writing a pop song for a boy band or a theme tune for a game show. You're not trying to be experimental. You're trying to be, you're trying to be conventional. Um, but the moment that might be crucial in the invention of your piece, the thing that makes it really good, might have come from just you messing about with one idea. It might be a tiny little thing that you've done. You may just say, oh, I'm going to put the bass line down an octave, and it completely changes the feel of your piece, and it's that that gives you the impetus to finish it. So you can be playful, you can be experimental, even if the music that you're doing isn't experimental. I think of myself as an explorer, so I'm always trying to try something new. You know, I'm not a very radical composer. I, I use quite well-known, well-found things. I often use cliches in my work, but I try and I try and ask myself questions, difficult questions, like, that doesn't belong here. OK, we'll bring it into the piece. That, I love that, pushing the uh, envelope in that world, too, and because that sort of works its way over to maybe the more commercial side, and I love seeing this, this blending of the worlds and coming up with these new hybrid musical sounds. It's, it's very exciting and it's also freeing to think anything goes. There are no boundaries. So often this will be at the beginning of the process when you're working out what you're going to do. 
Um, and there's so many things that you could try to almost trick yourself into uh, coming up with interesting ideas that you wouldn't usually think of. Like something I like to do at the beginning of my sessions, particularly with Tom, this, um, a producer and co-writer, um, is to like try and write probably the worst song that we could possibly write within an hour. Take your initial chords out. So those things that you, you know, is your guide. Yeah, if you like your 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 you know your stabilizers on your bike or whatever, take them out. Let the other stuff do the work. So I've written, I've just like drawn lots of dots and thought, okay, so I want to write a melody that's kind of spiky and goes like follows those dots. I also do quite appreciate sometimes setting ridiculous tasks. Like today, I'm going to write ten new pieces of music. I've done that occasionally, and on some occasions, four of them have been pretty good. Well, I have over the uh, last few, few years sort of picked up an instrument, and instead a new instrument that I don't know how to play. And if I've had an idea, piano is my instrument, I'll then try and put it on the cello or the flute or something, just to make the, because of the harmonic spectrum and it does something to your brain, that will make me think of the idea in a different way. For one piece that I, I wrote a little while ago, um, it was, um, it's inspired by Rosa Parks and um, the protest she made um, on the bus. So what I did was um, to get out of my comfort zone and to get out of habits, I looked at the number of the bus where she made her fam famous protest and then used the numbers of the bus to choose the notes that I would have in the melody as well as the the bass line, and also the um, time signatures. Funnily enough, I managed to create something really beautiful out of, you know, something uh, I would never have written. I actually sometimes play a game of trying to come up with a really bad idea. Yeah, that's interesting. I actually do that myself sometimes, write something which is deliberately bad. Sounds stupid, but it works. And a lot of things that sound stupid could actually work and help help um, sort of get your creative juices flowing. Breaking up your patterns and your habits and seeing if they create new ideas and get you thinking of new ways of working. Someone that we spoke to is really famous for having come up with this idea, which he called oblique strategies, which has been used by hundreds, thousands of artists over the last 40 years. So I was working with a, a lot then with a painter called Peter Schmidt. We were very close friends. And he had separately composed a list of his own of things that remind us to himself of ways of working. And so we combined them and we came up with this pack of cards. Um, so so that in, in a in a situation where you, you're finding life difficult and you're not kind of getting a good result and you're just treading the same path again, you, you pull out one of these. So that one says, where's the edge? Where does the frame start? Um, so I can, I mean, I could tell you many stories about specific situations where these have been. How about give us one choice anecdote. When I was working with Bowie, we used to use these a lot and one of the songs that we generated like that was this song called Rock Garden, I think, I think was the one. And what we used to do at that time was to take a card each, but keep it to ourselves. So we'd just carry on working, but with a secret instruction. And he, his card on that particular occasion was destroy nothing and continue with immaculate consistency or something like that. And my card was find the most, find the central element and get rid of it. Something like that. So they were two completely contradictory cards. Now the piece of music that came out of that could not have happened without such a strange tension going on of him constantly trying to keep the thing coherent and to create an identity for it. And me always trying to find the thing that gave it the identity and take it away. So these things are games, you know, in a way, um, and no one would pretend that you would automatically make a good piece of music just because you're doing that. But what is interesting is that if you 
place people in, a, in an unfamiliar situation, a territory that they've never been in before. What happens first of all, and this is the thing that I'm interested in, is that they become very alert. Suddenly they've, they're lost, so they've got to keep looking. Where am I? How, how do I navigate this? And alertness is the single quality that I want. So let's say you've made a mistake or something weird has happened and you think, oh, that's not what I meant. Well, you could correct it. Or maybe it's actually an interesting avenue that you could follow. Because very often when I'm working, the interesting things grow out of something not working properly, something not going where I expected it. Now, when something doesn't go where you expect it, you can either manhandle it back onto the path or you can say, I wonder where it's going, I'll follow it. I believe in happy accidents because uh, they, they reduce the workload for one thing. But there was a peace of mind. And something happened in the Sibelius where the cello line kept on this G and I couldn't get rid of it. And I thought, actually, it's going to be better to have that G operating as a silence, to have this drone, than to have complete silence. That, that was an accident. <laughs> that was a sort of jam almost that Talking Heads had been working on and it took quite a long time for us to realise that they were hearing the one in a different place from me. So I was putting all my all my one emphasis things and my backbeat and everything fell in a completely different place and I think the the strange rhythmic feeling of that song comes out of that fact that I was hearing the bass line Upside down, essentially. Um, I can't remember where my one was, but I think it was the two and or something like that. Where, where do you hear it? Sing I, I was going, I would go, two, three, four. You see, that's not, that's exactly the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this was, we realized this. So there was a point at which I think I was counting somebody in and they saying, what, what are you counting? And I said, well, I'm counting, but it's not the right count. And I thought, okay, this is why this piece is developing so strangely. It's because I'm adding things onto, the, onto what felt like the wrong beats. And then I said, let's not fix this. <laughs> Let, let's not agree about this because it's doing something good, you know. Even the tiniest experiment can have a massive effect. And I don't just mean by that on a particular track, although it can, but actually it could have a massive effect on your own musical development. If you always tend to start songs in the home key, your track is in the key of C and you always start on a C chord, why not start on a different chord? That could set you off on a whole new path of different kinds of songs. Or let's say your, your bass lines always start on the root note, like this. I'm playing an E chord and I have the bass in the E. Well, a, a very good rule is to, uh, for generating interesting bass lines, is avoid the root note and avoid the one. <laughs> Just see what happens if you avoid those. Investigate your software. I spend quite a lot of time because of the particular end of the music world that I'm in, I spend quite a lot of time just doing rather apparently tedious things like looking at new pieces of software. How does this new piece of software work? Um, and when I'm looking at it, what I'm always doing is, I think, well, I'll just make a little demonstration piece to see what this can do that nothing else could do. So in a way, I'm fooling myself into making a piece of music by by going round the back way, saying, I'm just making a demo of the equipment. Quite often, good pieces come out of that. There's hundreds of music apps out there, and they all have hidden depths. There's parts of the program that you might not um, immediately be drawn to, but they have massive creative potential. Now, you don't want to get stuck, so stuck in the software that you're beavering away 
in detail when you should be thinking about the bigger picture of your piece, but especially earlier on in the process, it's an amazing way of unlocking ideas, finding things that you would have never dreamt of, but which come to you. It's almost like having a clever assistant offering you ideas that you would have never thought of yourself. Okay, so let's just try using a bit of software in a way that it wasn't designed for. Here's a program called RX, which is usually designed as a sort of cleaning up tool to get rid of noises that you don't want, but I could try and use it in other ways. So this is a sound of a double bass. And I, what I could do is just isolate different frequencies here. Like here's the one sort of in the low middle. See what that sounds, move it up a bit. Yeah, not totally sure about that. Let's keep looking. Maybe just make it longer, make it a, a way, way longer, like by five times or something like that. And just see, and then do that and isolate. Hmm, interesting. Uh, maybe even deeper. Can you see how I'm not really inventing stuff? I'm just playing with things that are catching my ear. Like that one. I just feel like I could use that somewhere. Anything that is a sound, or in fact even silence, could be used as musical material. Um, this is not an original idea. It's, uh, it's something that is increasingly you see in, in film music and dance music where things that aren't pitched notes but are just sounds. It could be a crashing sound or a booming sound or a, bit, a big long tonal sort of texture which doesn't have a particular pitch. can all be catchy. They can all be themes. They can all be used just like you would with traditional musical material. There's a whole world of sound out there which you can use as a musician. So what we'll do is take a zoom to the space and get field recordings of water, of sirens. It's something I'm still trying to figure out, um, music and sound, where they cross over, what is sound, what is music, John Cage kind of yeah. world. But um, I think um, for me, um, I, I like to experiment with it. I think if you just record, record yourself talking. Record, record yourself talking. Record, record yourself, record, record yourself, record, record yourself. And then play that, that could be, that could be a tune, that could be a sound that you use.